Finally. That didn't take long. Two hours and 15 minutes uh, from the time that we were originally going to record this video, but we are ready to go and talk thoroughbred horse racing on Prime, actually on Horsepower PSN, a Prime Sports Network channel. Thanks for tuning in once again here. You can also tune in on Patreon. Don't forget about that. We have a link in the description, $5 a month. That's all. You can cancel any time. Uh, but uh, as we've often said here lately, our goal is to subscribe. It's a really easy process. If you've never subscribed before, just check out the subscribe button uh, right there on the screen. It's really simple. Uh, and you might be wondering, why should I subscribe? What's going to happen if I subscribe? Well, nothing. Nothing happens. You don't get any emails. You don't get any phone calls. Nobody bothers you. It doesn't cost anything. It's all for free, and nobody will ever know that you subscribed. So uh, check that out. And, of course, maybe if you've never even had an account, make sure to have an account, a Google account. You might need that uh, over on YouTube. It's a real easy process uh, because this is very important. Uh, the quicker we can get to a thousand subscribers, the quicker we can make all of our content available for you for free here on YouTube, including, of course, the races that are only available on Patreon. And if, don't forget, a couple of weeks ago, uh, Chad had his 35 to 1 shot Fort Washington on Patreon. And then uh, last week, uh, the big winner, though, came on YouTube uh, as uh, Chad, who's been on a nice hot streak here. Uh, hit the Ohio Derby. Uh, he hit the Exacta, excuse me, the Exacta, including the winner, oversubscribed. What did you think about that race, Chad? I thought it was fine. I'm not ready to put that horse in the uh, the, the winner circle for the Travers yet, but uh, he, he did what we thought he was going to do. I mean, the, the, sometimes when you handicap a race, you handicap the race on the racetrack, and it looked like on paper he was going to make the clear lead, and it was going to be too much for, for Brad's horse to, to come back and catch him, and that's exactly what happened. So, um at the end of the day that's just kind of the way that it that it, the cookie crumbles as uh jim carrey once famously said well hopefully john didn't have another blackout uh because he just disappeared from us again that's why i opened the show saying it took us uh, two hours and 15 minutes to get started we've had just uh one uh delay after another but um before uh, before we uh put a stop to this and try to start all over again Hopefully we'll get John right back again, but I want to continue on this Ohio Derby deal because we had four scratches in the race, Chad. So yeah. were those horses only th that had other? I mean, what, what is it? They had other options with the train. They were what's, what's the term? They were cross entered. No, I mean in this situation, no. It just uh, just kind of the way it went. A couple of you know little things happened. It's tough to get to. It's hot out. You know, some of the local horses might have thought that the race was just a little bit too tough. They might not have been expecting. Uh, to see a horse that ran third in the Preakness running in Thistle Downs, but uh, but that's happened. I know the there was another horse that had a, an issue that wasn't able to make it. They were worried about the track, so uh, these things happen. But it's not uh, not the end of the world. The the right horses showed up, and uh, the best horse on the day won. Yeah, and you also, as I mentioned, you had the exact in the race too. Uh, so uh, what was that payout? You remember? I I don't. Know. It was, a, it was a decent payout. Either way, digs. Yeah, we, we're getting well, John. I mean, you, beat the, you beat the three to five favorite. So. Yeah. So John's back again. Hopefully, uh, that'll be for the last time. So, <laughs> uh, uh, anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk about, though, uh, before we move on, uh, was the other race because. Um, in that one, we had, I know we had a, a viewer that asked us or, or commented about a couple of months ago whether or not there were still rabbits in the profession. Uh, well, I guess we had a rabbit, Chad, uh, in that uh, Thistledown race. No, what was that? No, it was the no, Belmont. that was the aqueduct race, yeah. uh, the grass race. The uh, wild applause stakes. Uh, that, was, that, that was just so, like, it just looked like it was almost too obvious of what was going on. Oh, as, I mean, they They'll argue that it's not. It's different ownership. I'm not sure uh, Christine and Phil Hatsfield would like to hear that their horse was sacrificed as a rabbit. Uh, so while it looked like that on paper, I'm not sure that that was necessarily the case. Um, normally, rabbits will come from the same the same owner trainer. Um, but uh, but yeah, no. It's certainly they went they went way too fast early. Uh, Johnny was setting the early fractions, and Joel was right off him, and Flavian Pratt was licking his lips and. 
you know, unfortunately, my uh, my top pick in that race was scratched. Otherwise, I think he would have won. So it's okay. Uh, yeah, uh, your horse was uh, one of the horses that was scratched. That was the seven, and uh, that was Tina Ballerina. No, that was um, no. Grayosh. Uh, by the way, yeah, I, 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 I said oversubscribe, but that was the that was the nine horse from this race. Uh, of course, Batten Down was the winner of the Ohio Derby. Uh, Chad's pick. And by the way, I, you were also uh, spot on, Chad, with the fact that uh, the heavy favorite in the race, Catching Freedom, had nothing. So. Yeah. No. And I think, I'm, I think we're, we're, we, we do okay at this thing. You know, I, I would love, you know, whether it's subscribers or not subscribers or whatever, I, I'm pretty sure I would take us against uh, any other show anytime we want to have any kind of a cross promotion or something like that. We're, uh, we're willing to put our, our handicapped prowess uh, to the defense, right, John? Absolutely. Yeah, we have to figure out a way to do that. Um, uh, by the way, as far as um, in that situation, is there anything like if you, as the trainer, you're the trainer in that race, do you, uh, are you upset at the, who was the jockey uh, who went toe to toe with that so called rabbit in that race? W- would you be upset well, at the rider? Yeah, would you be upset at the rider that he did that or did he just. You know, how how would that go down after Again, the race? It would, it would be the owner more so than the trainer because the trainer still won the race. So, um, yeah, I would think the owners would be very upset about uh, what what matriculated. You got a Hall of Fame jockey in front and a guy going to the Hall of Fame in August. Um, you know, it just it, it was a weirdly run race, but these things happen. You know, that's that's what makes horse racing so honest. You know, you can't tell the horses what the plan is. And what about uh, Dutro, the trainer of Macagna? Does is he upset at all at Velasquez in that situation? I mean, look, I, 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 he it looked like that was the plan was for him to make the lead, and he made the lead. It's you know sometimes you, you got to live and die by the sword. You know, it's it's uh, it's no different from any kind of strategy in any other sporting event. If you if you go in there with a game plan, sometimes the game plan works and you look like a genius, and sometimes it doesn't, and you look like the fool. Or uh, as somebody famously told me, sometimes you're the pigeon and sometimes you're the statue. All right. Now we have some comments that we're going to get to between races. It's a whole, so stay tuned for that. That's our viewer comments, uh, questions. Uh, let's start off, though, by uh, letting everybody know here that we are going to be talking about Churchill Downs this week. Of course, this is the big uh, race card for Saturday coming up on the 29th. We've got races 10 and 11. So here on YouTube, these races used to be these races used to be at nighttime. Remember, they used to be prime time yeah. on NBC. Saturday yeah. night. Now it's Saturday now it's, uh, now it's yeah. a regular Saturday card. Saturday night. Yep. Yeah. And so, what do you think? They didn't get the necessary traffic. Your guess? Oh, they, they, they had a deal with NBC actually, and uh, NBC didn't didn't cover it. That's too bad. So that's the kind of thing that really helps to support out. I mean, it just well, I mean, it's just from a timing perspective, it was great because now that window where there's nothing really going on. You have the, yeah. the, the dog days of summer with baseball, but, but all the other professional sports are over. You have, a, you have a little pocket of a window here while we wait for the Olympics that start July 24th. You have three weeks where you know you can take advantage of it. But again, uh, our, uh, our esteemed uh, colleagues, I don't know if it's considered the NTRA or whatever, I don't, they spend all this money. I don't know what they spend it on. So uh, our races will be on uh, ESPN The Ocho or you know TVG7 or... Fox Sports 99, I don't know. Yeah, uh, it's classic networks. Okay, so anybody that is watching on YouTube, you're going to be able to uh, hear what we have to say about the Stephen Foster Stakes. That's coming up race 11. First of all, uh, we're going to talk about race number 10, and this is only going to be available for our Patreon members. And we do have a new Patreon member, by the way, and he might have come on board. I think he came on board like the – the day after your Fort Washington long shot play. So correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Mr. This is, uh, by the way, a gentleman by the name of William Winkleman. So he's our newest Patreon member. So, William, uh, let us know if that's the case. Did you join right after you know that you missed out on Fort Washington, that big long shot play by Chad a couple of weeks ago? Either way, we're glad to have you on board. As we have returned uh, to YouTube, but we are going to first go over our comments, viewer comments, and we're going to get into the big race here of the week on YouTube. Carl E., I'm one of 487, this is at the time, 487 subscribers, one of only two channels I do subscribe. 
Baffled by that number not reaching a thousand. Subscribe, get them to a thousand. So all the content, not just the one race a week, is free to all. P.S. Would like some comments on other runners. Chad used to mention a runner or two under the radar. Example, Amor Fati. That's been missing for some time now. Thanks for the work. Anything, Chad? I would pay attention to my entries in the next few weeks. Okay. Uh, but, uh, Amor Fati is not running, but pay attention to his entries in the next few weeks. Did you okay. hear what he said? Okay. Nice tip. I heard it. Nestor Malero, congratulations for the great show. Deep and smart analysis of key races of the Belmont Racing Festival. Marcelo Rivadeniera, Barksdale became a new horse with the first time gelding pop. He's the real deal. Reminds me of Kinsale King. I have no idea what that means, but Chad, I guess you do. Uh, well, Barksdale uh, apparently ran the fastest time form number ever. Uh, in the opening quarter mile of the race at Belmont Saratoga. What was that, that uh, the, the sprint race? Um, yeah, that book, that they, broke the world, they broke the track record. They went like 57 or something. Oh, no, 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 that was on the turf. This was the Book yeah. and Dano race, that, oh. uh, the Woody Stevens. So, I mean, the, the, the early fractions were ridiculous, and the horses that were first and second were second to last and last. So uh, you might have won the battle, but you certainly lost the war. Patio said, great show, exclamation point. And Betsy Hobby Wicker, Chad hit first and second. Awesome job, Chad. Thanks, Betsy. Betsy loves Chad. That's beautiful. Nice. 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 Somebody does. <laughs> <laughs> All right, race 11 at Churchill. This is a mile and an eighth. The grade one Stephen Foster Stakes. This is a million-dollar race. Uh, should go my off. Goal, my goal is, uh, by the end of the year, I want Greg to have a win picture of one of my horses there instead of the Rutgers uh, thing hanging in his uh, background. A win hey, picture? Oh, you hey, mean like the, the photo? Pay attention to the next few weeks. Although, although I will tell you this. I, I, uh, in watching the NBA draft yesterday, I found out that the NBA draft is star-studded next year, and two of the top three picks are going to Rutgers. That's so right. I'm looking at the Rutgers future wager for you... the NCAA college basketball. That's <laughs> right. It's going to be huge for Rutgers this year, absolutely. One of, them, one of them's a guy from Maine, and he he, he was it, the the list of schools that offered him scholarships was hilarious. But I'm glad he chose Rutgers. Did you see the kid at seven nine that's still in high school? <laughs> seven nine. Seven nine. Is that Manu yeah, Bowles' uh, ne nephew? You no, I'm Do you ever see that vitamin water commercial with Manu Bowles? No, this is a white kid. He's 7'9". Seven, 7'9". Nine. Seven, nine. Wow. In high school. Well, does he have any meat on his bones? No. Okay. That's the problem. they got to build him up. I remember that guy. You know, I forget his bones. name. I put together a program for him. You know, everyone wants to put together a program for you to lose weight. If this right. guy needs to gain weight, I can put a, pro a program together for him. <laughs> yeah, did you see him? Did you see a picture of him? I, him? Have, I have not. I saw, I, I, saw, I saw an email you sent me of you on a horse. That was that was the highlight of my week. <laughs> oh! See, I'll put that picture on. That I'll put that behind my... Ten years ago. Let's go. All right. Where we going? So Next? again, this is the Stephen Foster stakes, and unfortunately, unless you have Patreon, uh, you don't know what the double could be. Uh, so uh, don't forget five dollars. Hit the link. Okay, let's uh, go over the morning line favorite. By the way, of the race is the two first mission, a six to five shot. The other uh, top uh, contender is the nine Skippy Long Stocking at five to two. Let's start with these two horses, John. Start with the two first mission. Uh, and uh, this horse is coming off at eight last time out in the Ali Sheba and at six in the race prior to that at Oak Lawn. Uh, so this horse is now starting to really put some races back to back together. But he's six to five uh, and you've got Skippy Longstocking in the race. So what do you think about first mission? He's the most likely winner in the race. He gets the advantage of drawing inside. Skippy Longstocking has got the extreme outside post. He's going to use his. He's going to be close up. He's not coming from a million miles out of it. I, I just think he's going to be very. Listen, we don't like giving out three to five shots on this show, but sometimes you got to take what they give you, and I think he's going to be tough in this spot. So this is a situation where I'm going to try and beat him, and okay. and he's he he if he wins the race, he's probably the favorite for horse of the year. I mean, him or National Treasure, to be honest with you, and. Uh, his last, he's coming off a win in the Essex and the Alley Sheep. It's a grade three and a grade two. He's, he's seeking that elusive grade one. This has been their 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 target race all year long. 
um, after he ran so bad in the Pegasus and didn't go to Dubai. My problem with First Mission is he does he he, he does this thing. He's almost like um, to use a college football thing when like Ohio State plays like nobody and they struggle. They might win, but they struggle. He plays to the competition. He kind, of, he kind of plays the competition. I loved him last last time in the Alashiba on the Derby undercard. And I thought he struggled. And I know he won by four, and this is going to sound silly. And everyone was like, oh, wow, the Japanese are here to play. Tio St. Dennis was amazing, this, that, the other. I thought he struggled to put Tio St. Dennis away for longer than he should have. I really don't know if he wants to go a, 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 a true distance of ground. I know this is a mile and an eighth and, and plays well, but he was second when he ran a mile and eighth in the Clark last time. And and at odds on, which he's definitely going to be odds on, six to five is the highest you'll probably see him, John, right? I, yeah. I, I, I think he, you use him and you have to play him in your multi-race tickets, but I'm going to try and beat him as, as the odds on favorite because I don't completely trust him and, and and knowing how brad cox trains it's interesting i know this was always the goal so you don't have to rush your horse back but he didn't breeze um from may 3rd to may 25th after the the race he had two he had three really really slow workouts then he has back-to-back 59s but but it's not really typical of of one of those brad cox superstar horses and how they how they work and how they train so uh, he might be he might be the, the 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 horse he is the horse to beat i'm gonna try and beat him all right, well, there you got Skippy Longstocking. We go all the way to the outside at the nine position, John, and we've talked a lot about this horse as well over the last uh, couple of years. I mean, you just take a look, uh, even going back to December of 2022, which is the last race on the form, that was a six in the grade three race a couple of years ago. Since then, his worst race is a 12. After that, everything is between six and eight, including a six last time out uh, in that race at Oakland Park. Listen, this is a terrific course. He's been to Oakland, Tampa, Gulfstream, Santa Anita, Charlestown, Prairie Meadows, Keelan, Tampa Bay, and back to Gulfstream in his last 10 starts. So he takes his track with him. He doesn't need to, you know, he shows, when he shows up, he runs. He never runs a bad race. Eh. That being said, I give the edge to the two because the two is drawn inside. Scooby Longstocking, in my opinion, trained like absolute garbage all winter long. I watched his horse train all winter, and I did not like him, and he ran to how he trained the Pegasus. He was actually pulled up by Tyler Gaffleon, okay? Uh, he was absolutely dreadful. He came back and he won the Challenger that day uh, at Tampa, but it was not impressive. When he was at Oakland last time and he walked into the paddock, it looked like Muhammad Ali uh, before a prize fight. He was a completely different horse. He was... He was snorting. His eyes were bulging out of his head. He was kicking anything that would move. Uh, I looked over at Jose D'Angelo and I said, I, I, I don't think anybody's beating Skippy Longstocking. And we were right. He he, he was dominant. He showed uh, a lot more early space than I thought he was going to. He's been forwardly placed before, but never in fractions like that. Um, he was he was sitting the perfect trip. And uh, and he was a, a much the best winner over Highland Falls, who ran well and came back and won his next race. Uh, for Brad Cox, obviously first mission, a better horse than Highland Falls. But um, the thing that, that you have to take notice of is since that race, he went back to Palm Meadows with a bullet 101, a bullet 46, and then an easy 49. He's he's acting like he's, he's, he's maintained that form. I just don't like the horse. I don't trust the horse. And I don't like rooting for the horse because they turned down the bag last year when I tried to buy him. So oh. I am, uh, I'm going to try and beat Skippy Longstocking, maybe for spite more than anything else. <laughs> okay, well, at least you're honest. Uh, wow. So you're going to try to beat the first two uh, the, the horses here, which are very strong favorites. And uh, Skippy Longstocking, again, coming off a six last time out. Uh, we'll see if uh, he can put that to Actually, the last time he ran a six, he ran a 12. So keep that in mind. Okay. Uh, next up, let's start at the top. Uh, we have uh, Pyrenees uh, and a 12 to 1 shot. Now, this horse appears to be on the rise, John, uh, because obviously, this, I mean, it's simple to see four straight wins and all, but you compare the sheet numbers from 2022. He only raced once, and that was December, late December. So it came back after a, after a year off, ran a 12 in December of 23. Then came another 12 in January of this year, and then another 9 and a 10. So his numbers are a lot better than they were in 2022. He's on a four-race winning streak, and you're getting 12 to 1. 
He's fine. And I think uh, Brian Hernandez breaking from the rail is going to get aggressive with this horse. I think he's going to show more speed. Um, you know, he has the rail. He might as well take advantage of it. And if he's really 12 to 1, I would use him underneath in my exact. If he shows speed, it's a mistake because he's not okay. fast enough to go, to go wire to wire. He, look, that, that was uh, a dream weekend for Cherie DeVoe uh, when he won the Pimlico Special. She won everything that week in, in, in Freakness Weekend. I think she won like four stakes or whatever. Uh, I thought that race was terrible. I thought somebody had a win and she took advantage of it. He took advantage of it. Uh, and it was a good ride from Brian. He's outclassed in this race. If he wins, it's not with my money. I, I don't like this horse at all. I don't think he hits the board. Happy American. Uh, just going to talk about the... Uh, the he's, uh, he's cross-entered He's cross -entered in the Hanson uh, on Sunday. I believe he's going to run in the Hanson. It hasn't been officially confirmed yet, but I don't think Happy American is going to run the race. And the other two long shots are the sixth classic Causeway at 30-1, to 1, who has really done nothing for a while. And Steel Sunshine, the eights at 20 to 1, who actually has put up some nice numbers, John. He's got sevens and eights in a five run stretch from October to uh, the March 30th race uh, in the Ghost Apper. But then the last race at Churchill ran at 12. Well, that was a sloppy track. The problem with him is I don't know if he wants to get a mile and an eighth. But at 20 to 1, I would use him underneath somewhere. But again, I think he may be distant compromise here i wish they had prop wagers on what owner michael ivaron will be wearing that's that's my thing will he have a shirt on will he have four chains on uh he he, he very much tries to be the white mc hammer um <laughs> so it's i'm more interested in his outfit than the horse the horse is a cool horse this is the wrong race look uh mac Murhall uh stood behind this horse that the mayor's been a really really wonderful mayor uh rooting for carrie brogdon and uh and company uh they're trying to get a grade one, trying to make him a stallion. He's their stock class. This is not the right race for him. All right. And now we've got three interesting contenders. We're going to start with the four disarm. A six to one shot. You get Rosario on board. Coming off a win, a wire to wire win, actually, with uh, Asmussen's, uh, what is that, his brother? His son. Oh, son. His son. Even better. Uh, Buddy ran a 12 in that race uh, because the previous two races, John, last year, he ended with a couple of eights. Uh, but still, you're getting six to one with Rosario back on board. He's got a shot, but I you, I don't know if you want six to one. You probably want to listen. If you're using a horse like the two or the nine, you got to find double digit horses to use underneath. Otherwise, it's useless. So, you know, for that reason, uh, he didn't make the cut. But I could see people liking him. That's for sure. I'm, I'm going to make him my top uh, my top selection here. Slight, slight top selection here. Um, I don't mind the six to one at all because I don't. I, I think he can beat the favorites. Look, his Travers was really good last year, and he got hurt out of it. But he ran a really, really game second to Archangelo that day. I was really proud of what I saw of him. He looked really good. His coat looked good. He finally looked like he was a horse that everyone kept trying to make comparisons to Epicenter, and it just it wasn't coming. It just never really showed up. He ran in the Derby last time. He ran fourth. It, it, it just he wasn't there yet and the travers it looked like he finally finally was figuring it out he he got the time after the travers they they shut him down they didn't run for the breeders cup the point for a four-year-old campaign i like the way he's been handled and prepared steve asmussen obviously a hall of famer for a reason uh he knows what he's doing found the perfect allowance race to run him back and i love the fact actually that he got a 12 on the sheets because i don't think he was geared up i think this was always kind of their plan and so there's room to, to, to grow from there, John, right? I mean, if yeah. you ran a single digit off that bench, uh, you might be sitting there going, oh, man, he, met, he ran May 18th. Yes. You'd be worrying he's going to regress. And the fact that he ran a 12 to me off the fact of the heels that he had eight and nines in him, to me means, hey, he can certainly take that other step forward, which he needs to do. No question. All right. Uh, the five is dreamlike, a 10 to 1 shot. You get Pletcher and Irad Ortiz Jr., but Pletcher is not having a good meet here so far, surely. Uh, but anyway, you're getting 10 to 1 on a horse, John, That's that right. over the last three races has gone from 12 to 10 to 8. Uh, hasn't won in the last five, but still, he is showing progress at 10 to 1. Yeah, he's got one win in his life with four seconds. I don't like that. I mean, listen, uh, and he's off the top. To me, it looks like he has to react off of that race. Well, the good thing is, out of the nine races, the, the, I mean, he's had everything 12 or better except the 16. 
So that's yeah. pretty consistent. And again, like you said, you're looking for a, a higher priced horse if you're going with the. So, so you're really looking at Dreamlike is if you like them. Well, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with second because I'm going to get a pretty decent price with my top horse. Right. Chad, well, he's my he's he's my uh, my co top choice. Yeah. Okay, I mm -hmm. I like this horse a lot. I, there aren't a lot of times where where we duck horses, and we skipped a race called the Discovery Stakes because I thought Dreamlike was going to run the Discovery Stakes. Next thing I know, he ran in the Breeders' Cup Classic because I forgot he was owned by the fake commissioner. And and <laughs> the, the thing is, to me, look, they have a lot of horses right now. They have Croupy. We saw them run the other horse that won the race in uh, in Mammoth the other day. So they had to separate their horses. This horse has been pointing for this race for a long time. I don't know why they took the blinkers off. If you go back, he ran three starts in the blinkers, and they might have been the three best races of his life. He he won. He, he was he was beaten ahead in the Wood Memorial as a maiden. He ran super that day, John. Remember? Yeah. And then he came back. He broke his maiden by six and a half, and then he ran badly in the allowance mm -hmm. race. But not, he wasn't right that day. He didn't look right. Everything else. And then he ran well in Pennsylvania Derby. This is a nice horse, and I love the fact they put the blinkers back on. Um, but they need to clarify something because there's no way he worked at Churchill on June 13th, Saratoga June 17th, and then Churchill on June 22nd. So there looks like there's an error. I don't think he spent four days at Saratoga quickly. So I would I would ignore that June 17th workout. That's probably a different dream uh, that worked out at Saratoga. I, I think a 10 to 1 with Ired Ortiz, this horse is super live, super, super live. Okay. And then uh, the seven horse, uh, this is going to be my top pick, uh, Kings Barnes. Uh, six to one shot uh, again another Pletcher horse uh, so look the one negative is this horse has been seven out of eight in the money with five wins but the only time he didn't hit was a Churchill but that was a Kentucky Derby so um, I'm willing to uh, you know uh, give him a break there uh, he's coming off 10-9-10 uh, this year um, and uh, Saez by the way on board this would be the fifth straight finishing first or second with Saez uh, what about the seven John Kings Barnes to me, he's a little slower. He's. A, he, do you see that single digit yet? Not really. I don't yeah, know. Just the nine. Yeah, but he's only six to one. Well, you know, yeah, in that's my the opinion, thing. He's, yeah, not that's, yeah. than, he's not better than the one who's twice his price. You know, just uh, you know, again, these are all these horses are close. You want to yeah. use them? You could use them. You got to shop for value, though. I don't. I don't like this horse. He was look. He went a half and fifty and three quarters and fifteen and two in the Pimlico Special and stop now if, if you're going to make the argument that the extra 16th of a mile is the difference between making him a good horse and not that's that's up to you and you're getting six to one for that that opinion it's not my opinion i just don't think he's good enough i'm i'm not a fan i've never been a fan of this horse uh he walked the dog in the louisiana derby when he won um he won the ben ally that's fine i don't think he beat anybody that day i'm just not sold that he's a top horse and uh, i i don't think that he's better than than three or four others in this race i don't like this horse uh, just like Pyrenees, I don't think he hits the board. I'm not a fan of this horse. All right, so pick time. And, John, you, you've I'm got your pick. The, I'm putting the two first mission over the one Pyrenees, the eight Steel Sunshine, and the nine. I don't even know why I have two nine, but I wrote it down, so I'll keep it. Two with two one. Over one eight, two over one eight nine. Two over one eight nine. And, Chad, I know you like the four and the five the most. I yeah, couldn't disagree with John Moore. He played five horses and not the two I like on top. I, I like the four and the five. I'll make this arm my my joy. In all uh, wagers, uh, four and five on top, I couldn't separate them. So I, I, if you're making exact or a try, uh, especially with the prices you're going to get, we're going to try and beat the favorites. Uh, four and five uh, on top of the two, four, five, uh, nine. But I, four and five uh, on top. Must use four and five on top of the other of the two favorites. All right, so dead heat four five for Chad with two and nine, correct? Yeah. Okay. And again, John right. two over one eight nine. I'm going to go with the seven over the five and the nine. All right. So that's this week. Next week, uh, what did we say next week? That is going to be Belmont. The Belmont. New York, New York, yeah. New York. We've got two Grade Ones: the Belmont Derby Invitational and the Belmont Oaks. They also have the Grade Three Dwyer. And the grade two, John Nurud. 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 Anyway, 
So two grade ones next week. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Also, uh, hit that Big link. Big Delaware to Park, by the way, next week. Anybody, anybody watching? Big Weekend, uh, split the races. Uh, four stakes on both days at Delaware Park on Saturday and Sunday. And also, with it being Fourth of July weekend, there's six stake races in Indiana. We have the Corn Husker in Prairie Meadows. There's a lot of excitement right now. Uh, a lot of stake races while Joey Chestnut is forced to watch from the sidelines. <laughs> Goodbye, Joey guys. Chestnut. Have a great week. The guy from the <laughs> hot dog eating contest in Coney Island. Where have you been, Greg? Your whole life. Oh yeah, I don't. I, those You're are a things. Deprived child. He's a three-star safety going to Rutgers. All <laughs> yeah, right. Okay. All right, guys. Appreciate it as always. See ya. And uh, by the way, I'm going to go ahead and recap uh, uh, the picks. So uh, for this race only, because I can't give you the picks. Uh, for what we did on Patreon. But again, John's going 2 over 189. Chad's going 4 5 with 2 9. I'm taking 7 over 5 9. Again, we did race number 10 at Churchill. That was the Kelly's Landing Stakes. If you want to know what we did in that race, hit that link, the Patreon link. And if you're having any trouble at all subscribing, uh, trying to figure out how to become a member at Patreon, just let me know. You know, hit me in the comment section. And keep this in mind, too. If you're having a problem and, and you're wondering, well, I, I can't even figure out how to leave a comment. Well, uh, best thing I can say to that is, is uh, we have our email address on our Prime Sports Network channel. It should be the contact information, I believe, on this channel as well. So you can send us an email and let us know that you're having a problem subscribing, you're having a problem uh, getting the link on Patreon. Uh, just uh, you know, do your best to inform us of, of what the problem is. And by the way, if you happen to be somebody that is a client of John Hardoon's, then you know how to connect with John and go ahead and uh, do that. Let John know, and then he'll get back to me and we'll figure out how to, how to make it work for you. Uh, and you can also check out the link in the description for our Discord. So that's also very simple to use. We have a link of how to operate and, and, and get Discord on your computer. We also have a link of just how to fill out your information on Discord. That's all for free. And what we use Discord for are, are other things like this. You know, if you have a question, comment, something like that, maybe you can't for whatever reason leave it on YouTube, you can use Discord and you can uh, let us know what's on your mind. So we have Discord, we have uh, the channel, of course, here, uh, Prime, actually, this is, of course, the uh, Horsepower PSN channel. We've got our main channel, Prime Sports Network, uh, Patreon. So we've got a lot of different ways of giving you, and, of course, John Hardoon. Uh, we have a lot of different, and don't bother Chad. We have a lot of different ways of how you can get through to us. So, uh, and again, we, we're getting some really good viewership. We've got to get the subscribers up. Because as, uh, what was it, Carl Lee said, I mean, you know, we've got a lot of viewers and not enough subscribers. You know, that statistically speaking, we should have a lot more subscribers. We need to hit. This isn't just like, oh, when we hit a thousand, then I'm going to do this. I can't do what I'm asking, what I'm saying that we want to do because those are the rules of YouTube. So, you know, we can't make this free to everybody and take out a Patreon unless we get the thousand subscribers. That's when advertising kicks in for the channel we get compensated by youtube and then i'm able to take away from uh, asking for donations basically is what it is over on patreon all right so let us know what you can do there uh, again just reach out to us if you have any uh, questions comments anything like that and uh, best of luck uh, for the race by the way we also did uh, a couple other bonus races uh, we didn't go over the entire field but uh, I, uh, Chad does have picks for the uh, Wise Dan, the Race 7 and Race 8. So he's got picks for Race 7 and Race 8. So there's two great two stakes races at Churchill, but only, of course, on Patreon. So thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you next week.